Hi! Today we're going to go over reflective ceiling plan. Now you guys already did your final floor plan, which is fantastic because from here on out, we're going to utilize that floor plan to create a reflective ceiling plan and it'll go much faster. So let's get started. The first thing that I did was I outlined blocking out my reflective ceiling plan by using my floor plan. I just slide this under and I traced the outline of all the things that I needed that were representative here in your drawing. Then I went back to the drawing and I scaled out things that I needed measurements that aren't on my floor plan. Like what is the length of this little line? And what is that little dimension? And how far are these little circles? For each other. Those represent lights. So let me explain what we're looking at here. What you're looking at here is the ceiling of the um, floor plan. It would be like laying on the ground and staring out. This little line represents a soffit. That means it's a dropped section of the ceiling. That soffit meets the cabinetry underneath and it is utilized for plumbing and electrical. So the soffit is very important, and it's just only over the cabinetry. That soffit that drops, um, that soffit that drops a foot makes that part of the ceiling only seven feet. In the middle, the ceiling height of this space is eight feet. Remember, we need heights of things in order to do our elevations, but we also put all ceiling heights on reflective ceiling plans. That's where we get that information. So it's important. So as I look at this reference drawing, the first thing that I do is I outline it. And once I outline it, I've gotten so much of the work done. Now, I'm looking at this, I have it outlined. Now I've got to fill in the blanks. So I found out that that is 3, 6, so I went 3, 6, and that will be my little line that I will continue to create my walkway right here. So what this is, is the second floor lays on top. This is part of the, um, this is covered. So people will walk down there. These little circles represent down lights. And I'll show you on the bigger plan just so you can see. This is what your drawing will look like. This is a 12 inch soffit that's dropped here. This is the hood of the stove. You walk in and out, it represents an opening. As you walk down here, there is a lower part of the ceiling. This ceiling is eight feet above finished floor, eight feet high. These are little down lights, which we call recessed cans, and more recessed cans, and one over the sink. Here's the bathroom. The bathroom has no soffits, so it's just eight feet. And here's a little light in the bathroom. This says open to above. So this is very high ceilings because this is a loft studio. When we go into the second floor, you'll see some other elements. And we'll put it the right way, the same way as this. We have a ceiling fan that's hanging on a beam. These lines represent rafters. It says rafters. Rafters are large beams. And there's also beams going this way. This is showing that, and there's a slope. That means there's a point and then it slopes down. So if we're looking at the elevation view, we would see that this is a sloped ceiling. And these represent rafters or little like beams. And those beams go down and they, you know, oh, that's not very good, but these beams represent part of the ceiling. So we have beams here and information. It says down slope, down slope. It tells me also that this ceiling height is 25 feet. So it's really high. So that's 25 feet to the highest point, 25 feet. So 
we can see how high this entire loft double story studio is. So this information conveys more downlights, says it's 13 feet here at the wall. So what that means is 13 feet here and it goes all the way up to 25 feet at the highest point. That's what the RCP represents, it gives us information. 13 feet here at the wall and 25 feet at the highest point. So that gives us what we call a pitched roof. So that's what you're seeing here and that's the information. These are just the ceiling. We're looking from the, from the sky down or I mean, we're looking up at it so we're seeing what's going on in the ceiling on the top floor. This represents a light that are placed in the ceilings. So as you can see, there's not a ton of information, it's not too complicated, and we have most of our work done. So we outline the floor plan, then you will add these extra architectural features. One of them being that foot soffit that goes all the way around. So you will measure out one foot all the way around, and you will utilize you will utilize your parallel bar and triangle to create that soffit. And, and that's what we do. And so once you do that, and remember, you know, you block it out first so you don't have to get so perfect. You can cross over a little on each side. And then we're going to give, give us our, our U-shaped soffits. I will use my parallel bar, but I'm trying to, um, trying to get, make sure that you can see here. So right here, um, oops, now the soffit doesn't go all the way through. I made a little mistake and this is why we block out drawings. <laughs> so this is like a U soffit. So it actually stops right there because there's no cabinetry there. We will also place all the down lights as you measure those and it said that they were on our reference drawing. Those little lights will go right down the center right here and I measured them at two feet six inches and it's right in the middle so you will do the same you will measure first of all one foot and then two feet six inches and every two feet and six inches will be a light and then as you do that you measure right in the middle where they start and we know that this is this entire kitchen is seven feet so at three and a half feet we will just pray right in the middle there. We'll just put our pretty little down lights right in the middle. Use one of these templates and use a really small little, a uh, little small, um, a little small light, about six inches or so, and just place those circles perfectly right here, right down the middle, two and a half feet on center. And that's representing your row of lights. Also there's one over center right over here about here. Also they have them and measure right along the pathway. So place your lights and we also know that we can um, now um, connect um, these, these, uh, this, this line and you're going to use your parallel bar. Don't do what I'm doing right now. That's that pathway. There's also different elements, your door here that you would add that I didn't finish. So what does this represent? They're walking down the hallway. Um, here is the stairs. There's a little arrow going up. And also too, remember when you're doing your final, you're gonna push the back of this, right? By coloring it in nice and dark, nice and dark. And that will give it a nice dark charcoal um, wall look, okay? So as you develop this, I also want to discuss something else that's important. Once you place all of these components in and you get a drawing that looks like this, we also am going to talk a little bit about these lights need a light switch. So I want you to place a light switch and we are going to show what that light switch controls. A light switch um, symbol looks like this. It looks almost like a dollar sign with one line through it. That stands for a light switch. Now, 
if you have a light switch that turns something on and off, you will put the light switch where you think it should go, which we are going to put our light switch right here. And remember, always use a template and the best architectural lettering. That light switch will turn on all of these lights. And how do we do that? We create a circuit line. So we go from the end and it's a little dashed line. And it's always curved, showing a circuit. This is called a circuit line. So make sure you put your circuit line with your switch. Now, in a kitchen, if I walk in here and turn on my lights, but I walk out here, it would sure be handy to have a switch here to turn off my lights. So let's add one, shall we? We're going to add a perfect little S, and they're only a quarter inch, and we're going to continue that circuit right to here. But now we have to call this a three-way switch. So the symbol for a three-way switch is putting the letter three right there. Why a three-way and not a two-way? Because it represents switch, circuit, and switch. Three things. So we're going to put a little teeny three right next to our switch. That shows that I can turn the light on here and I can turn it off there. Now you'll have to place other switches. You'll be placing one right here for this down light and one right next to it. For this light, there is a light over the sink. So, these are two switches here you'll need to add. And we will do a dot, 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 and dot, 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 dot. That creates, that light switch turns on the light over the sink. This light switch turns on the main light. And, there are other light switches. One right here. We will place a little switch here as you're walking down the hallway. And then, as you walk up the stairs, you want to turn off the switch. We'll place a switch here. And once again, dot, dot, or dash, 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 and we are going to dash, 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 to there. And we'll put another three for three-way. Now I can walk down here, turn on the lights, and turn it off as I'm going to my bedroom. Then we want to also add one for the outdoor light and the indoor light. So we're going to add switches here as well. Here's an S and here's an S. This one will just control that light. This one will control the outdoor light right there. So now we're having a nice, um, nice uh, ability to turn on and off lights. Here also is a light right above the sink. So we will put one S here with a perfect little switch and another dot, dash, 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 dash. Remember, they're always curved. Now we have the back door taken care of. Let's take care of the front, shall we? Here's another switch. There's two switches here. Once again, one for above the door and one for the outdoor. So this one will be dash, 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 dash to here. And this switch will control that light. We as designers place lighting quite often throughout a space. So we need to show what switches go. I missed one switch and that's for up the stairs. So we are going to have an additional switch right here that has a three as well. And we will dash this light to that. And we will connect it all the way up to this light. So now 
This switch controls this light and this light. Those are the stairway lights. This switch and this switch controls the stream of lights that go down the hallway. This switch controls the light over the back door. That switch controls the light over the outdoor patio. This switch controls over the sink. This switch controls over the bathroom. This switch controls over the sink here. And here we have a two or three way that goes and controls these lights and turns off there. And then the same with a switch that's over the door and the back. So now you have all your switches and I want you to add those. As we go to the second floor, there will be a few switches there. We will have a switch right here for the ceiling fan. We've got to be able to turn that on. So you will just take the ceiling fan and add your little circuit line right there. Okay. Now, this ceiling fan, though, really has to be um, so someone can reach it. We're high and there's open ceiling, there's open air. So next to this switch, I want you to put 48 inches AFF, which stand for above finished floor. That shows that that switch there is down below and it's 48 inches above finished floor. So it's your right switch height. And now we have a switch that controls that fan that's very... Now, once you've added that switch, your final switch is right here. These two lights from going upstairs. So you will put a circuit line here. And remember, we started this downstairs. So you want to be able to walk up the stairs and turn it off. So we're gonna add an extra switch here and put a three, and that continues what we did on the top floor. We put a three-way, and it continues, and you turn it off there. So you've turned it on, and now as you go up the stairs, you turn it off. That shows all of our various um, switches. Now, don't forget to add all these notes, down slope, 25-inch ceiling, 13-inch right there. So as you look at this, making sure on your reference drawing that you're able to um, really um, put all the different notes and um, put it on your beautiful title block. And remember to put first floor, second floor reflective ceiling plan. And you will have two beautiful final drawings with the switches and the circuits all representing the reflective ceiling plan for this final, this project. So once you see it's all coming together, from here, we are going to work on interior elevations of both the kitchen and the bathroom. And hopefully that will all come together and then we'll start on continuing with our exterior. So hope you guys really get a concept of a reflective ceiling plan and I look forward to hearing your feedback.